there's a condition that I find absolutely fascinating. It's called synesthesia. Synesthesia is when activity in some part of the brain happens to also cause activity in an unrelated part of the brain, resulting in a very weird experience. And the result varies drastically between different people. For some people, they are actually able to see musical notes as colors. For other people, particular words may actually evoke a certain taste in your mouth. It's weird and awesome. I actually have a mild form of this called number form synesthesia in which I actually see numbers in some sort of physical relationship with one another. That sounded inappropriate. See, numbers one through nine are roughly like a number line, and then after that it gets a little loopy and weird. Then the teens go back to a regular sort of number line type of thing. The, the 20s go vertical, which is weird, and then the 30s actually go from right to left, which is very odd indeed. But what I've discovered is that this actually tends to help me out when I'm doing the multiplication, as you do after you get out of math. I promise you will use multiplication in your life at some point. But my number line is not just populated with numbers, but also associations between various numbers. For example, three and seven are pretty closely associated with 21 because that's something that I know. And so there's kind of just a perpetual path there now. And I think the strongest one for me is the relationship between 16 and 32, probably because the 32 is right above 16 in this weird spatial map of numbers that happens to exist in my brain for some weird reason. Probably not as cool as being able to see music with numbers, but you know what? I will take what I can get. But as I say, it's something that's fascinating to me, the way that we make connections between completely disparate stuff. While synesthesia may be an extreme form of this, I think we all have this to a certain extent. You're walking along and you smell something that you haven't smelled since you were eight, and all of a sudden you're right back there playing with your Legos or your dolls or your Easy Bake Oven. Uh, what did people play with when they were eight? I honestly don't remember anymore. I need to smell something. For some of you, maybe the easiest thing to relate to is music. I hear these four notes and instantly I'm in my early teens and I'm thinking about my grandparents who passed away long ago and the food court food that we had before we went and saw this concert and I remember what it was like to be that age and what it was like to feel certain things and to feel like I had to be rebellious but I didn't know how to be rebellious and just kind of the arrogance of trying to be this kid who knew everything and despite my parents knowing more than me and all of these things that don't exist in my brain until those four notes happen to be played. These associations between completely disparate things that help us remember things that we otherwise would have completely forgotten. In fact, there's a technique called the method of loci that's attributed to Greek and Roman orators, and orators are people who were responsible for speaking to the people. And they would have these long-winded speeches. Some of them were philosophers, some of them were messengers, whatever it was, but they would have these long speeches. They would talk for hours on end. And the problem with that is that you need to kind of know what it is that you're going to be talking about. And you do that, it's kind of difficult to memorize hour-long speeches. So rather than try and memorize the speech, they would take the main points that they wanted to talk about, and then they would think about a journey, say, the journey back to their house. And along that route that you know so well, there are plenty of landmarks that you remember, the Colosseum, the bathhouses, your friend Ned's house, or Nedis, I guess would be the Roman version. And they would place each of those bullet points that they wanted to talk about on a particular landmark. So then when they're giving the speech, all that they have to do is remember how to get home because they see the Colosseum, oh, that reminds me I want to talk about that. Oh, the bathhouses, that brings up this thing. It's an association between things that have absolutely nothing to do with one another, but they help us remember what we're doing. I think that's why I find myself so obsessed with new things, reading new books, listening to new music, watching new TV shows and movies and all of that sort of thing. Not just because it helps me learn stuff that I haven't encountered before, but because it helps me remember the stuff that is already a part of my life. The fact that those four notes can trigger an entire lifetime of emotional experiences is remarkable. And I guess all I want to do with my life is try and rack up as many of those triggers as possible.